So I think we can now start with the first uh, presentation that will be by Dimitri Faith, the chair of the TC266 MRP, which is titled the Measuring Radiological Properties of Cement-Based Materials. So thank you, I'll leave you at this stage. Thank you, Enrico. Thank you, everybody, for being here uh, in person at Kyoto, beautiful city. Uh, I'm online. I'll we'll wait for this presentation to start, but just want to give an overview of our accomplishments uh, of DC266 uh, MRP, measuring the rheological properties of concrete. Uh, I have to apologize, Mohamed Salami, our chair. Uh, unfortunately, he has some personal things he needs to take care of in Europe. Uh, so he's very sad he couldn't make it. So last week on Wednesday, I actually got a call from Mohammed. He's like, are you going to be in Kyoto? Are you going to give the presentation? Because I can't make it. So his apologies. Um, let's see. Turn this thing on. All right. So here we go. So the motivation for RTC is that rheology on concrete has actually been started in the 1950s. It's been a very old thing. I thought the shop had a big paper in 1950-something, right? But it's only been taken off since my Japanese friends over here have been working on our PCEs and our SEC, and that has really boosted uh, the research and implementation of rheology. Um, but um, if I look in our random committees, and so on, there's been no separate document, no separate committee looking into rheology or the rheological measurements, right? And if you look a little bit in order on anything that has to deal on the topic, we got 145 on workability, we got 174 on SEC, and a little gap, and now all of a sudden we go to simulation and full pressure, which are two committees that heavily use rheology. So there's a gap in there in between those two, and actually we're spanning the cart in front of the horse because we don't know how to measure. Right, so that's the motivation behind this uh, committee and, and really looking into all the difficulties because it's not an easy thing to do, is measuring rheological properties. So we have the following deliverables. deliverables. We'll have a state-of-the-art report uh, that's quite extensive in measuring uh, rheology. Uh, we have two separate publications right on technical letters. One has been published, one is still going on. Uh, and that will focus on cement paste. So we decided with the committee early on to only focus on water and concrete in the state of the art report, not to make it too extensive. Uh, then we have performed a Rome Brumman test uh, on concrete rheometry, and we got four publications coming up in, in topic collection in materials and structures. And then we had two one-day workshops uh, on the rheology and rheometry of some materials. So our team, uh, the first thing I want to say is that all of the members, we got 30 members, have contributed to at least one of the deliverables. So uh, Mohammed and I met in 2019, we looked into the committee roster and say, okay, all these people have contributed. We had a certain number of people that did not contribute and we frankly thanked them for their service. That didn't happen. So we really said, so everybody on the team right now has actively contributed to the mission of the committee. And also we had new people being interested in the committee, we thought we're too far in or finalized for closed membership. Uh, so the, the theme of 30 is a theme that continues. So 30 members were spread over three continents in Asia, Europe, and the Americas, but with heavy concentration in Europe. 20% uh, were students when they started to be active in the committee, uh, which is not bad, could be better. Uh, but we're very proud to say that our students have really been very active participants. And not just sitting in the committee meetings and just listening, they've really been contributing in the discussions and the analysis and so on. So we're really proud of that. So what a couple of students that we had have really been very active in the mission of the committee. 70% uh, of members are associated with the industry and to be in a topic that's very academic, that's not bad at all. Where we could have been better is our 30% female, although if you look at the students only, it's a third, so we're moving in that in a good direction as well. Uh, we had 16 meetings uh, in total, 7 in person, 9 virtual, uh, but that's for the general committee. And I've lost count on the other number of meetings we had with the subcommittees, looking at certain things, it's been definitely more than 30. Some major milestones, we started in Melbourne in, 27, in 2015. Uh, 2017, our first outcome was a random technical letter paper uh, on the rheometry of cement pastes. In May of 2018, we did a Robin test, uh, three days of Pure, well, two days of pure physical labor, and the test to that was the first workshop we did. Then in November of that same year, we had a second workshop. In March of 2022, we actually presented all the results of the Robin test during a full session during the ACI convention. And for those familiar with ACI, uh, to get a full session from pure rhino is not that straightforward. Uh, so that's a big accomplishment. Uh, and then by the end of the year, we should 
have the start. So we should have the start. We should have the topical collection, and we should have our last round technical letter paper as well. So here's a state of the art report. So again, focused on water and concrete. So we split it up. Uh, built out of eight chapters, of which six technical chapters. Uh, and we'll go step by step through each of the chapter. So chapter two is rheological properties. Uh, it's been led by Wolfram Schmidt and Julian Link. And Julian is one of our students that's been very active. Uh, and this just gives you a general introduction to what is rheology, uh, what are some of the constituent elements that affect rheology, to define yield stress, to define viscosity, and so on. It's not really a metric, it's not really measurement, but if you don't know what you want to measure, you don't really can't measure, right? So that's the first chapter we had that's technical. The second one is led by Sophia, who's actually sitting over here, and I don't know. Um, and this the real meters, the tools, the equipment, right? And one of the first things we had over there, and that's been a very early decision of the committee, is to define a rheometry, which in our science has not been done, right? And we defined this thing as a tool of which its primary function, so that's one very important thing, there's other things that measure rheology as a side aspect, no, it has to be a primary function, is to measure reality, measure the relationship between stress, strain, or shear rate, right? And we load the sample with a master solicitation. It should be a stress, a strain, or a shear rate. Uh, and then you get a recordable answer that you can easily transform into rheological properties. And according to that definition, then we build chapter three, uh, which contains all the equipment. So we got free, fl free flow rheometers, a uh, large majority of the rheometers are rotational. Uh, we have some confined flow rheometers and then the static rheometer as well. So that's what's in chapter three. Then chapter four, you have the equipment. So now, how do you perform a measurement? So that's been led by Omar, Yahya, and Adul Perot. Uh, and it describes procedures on how to measure the rheological properties, uh, both steady state, so yield stress viscosity, and anything nonlinearity on it. And then time dependency, if you talk about exotropy, if you talk about uh, portability loss, and so on. And then the strategies, the calculation strategies, because rheometers don't measure stress and shear rate directly. And the calculation strategies on how to get your fundamental parameters in there. And again, that's not a straightforward aspect. Then chapter five uh, is the challenges. What can go wrong, right? And there's quite a bit that can go wrong. Uh, it's been led by uh, Jon Wolovic and myself, and it's anything that can neg negatively affect the correct interpretation or the validity of the measurement. And there's quite a bit of things, I'm not gonna list them all, but it's quite a bit of things that can affect the measurement itself, and we think it's very valuable information to discuss. Then chapter six is the empirical mass test methods that can be related to rheology. So these are the things, these are the tools that are not following the definition of a rheometer in chapter three. Like a slump, we can use a slump, we can use slump to calculate yield stress, right? A slump, it's not this primary function, is not to measure yield stress. So that one moved to chapter six, and then there's a whole lot of other things that move to chapter six uh, because they're not according to our definition of a rheometer, right? So we discussed relationships of the empirical test methods with yield stress viscosity to talk from water and concrete. Uh, we looked a little bit uh, into extrusion and 3D printing, but not much, because we have lots of other committees on that. And then mixed and drug assessments as well coming in there. And then chapter seven, which was not in the original plan of the committee, but was deemed very important, is what we call interface rheometry and tribology, and that's been led by Yannick Van Oof, Shafika Jalal, and Tilo Proploske. And it's the only chapter in the entire state of the art report where it looks at concrete as a non homogeneous material. So it doesn't have the same properties as a function of space. Um, so, and then we really distinguish between friction, and then we can associate an atribology to it, and lubrication layer formation, which is in case of pumping a very important aspect. Uh, we call that the interface rheometry. And we really want to focus on that definition of interface rheometry, because historically, that part of our science has been described as tribology wrongly. Because tribology is a science of friction, and we didn't really have friction. Are we going down? What's happening here? All right, there we go. All right. So that's really uh, one of the things that also we accomplished. So that's our state of the art report. So where are we right now? So all technical chapters, so chapters two through seven, uh, have been reviewed uh, by the committee. Uh, we have additions going on, and we just wait on the final approval of the chapter leaders on the additions that have to the chapters, so these are ready to go. Uh, we still got our introductory and the conclusion chapters that need to uh, be approved by the committee, but that should be a formality, uh, and that should be final in October, so we're, we're about there. Then we have the publications and writing technical letters. So we had one paper in 2017 on the invitation of Nicolas Oxel. Um, it's on cement-based rheometry, so that's outside of the state of the art report, but you know, it has a lot of commonalities with it. 
uh, and that goes on measuring biology of cement pastes. Um, and then we have a second one that's been in preparation, uh, led by Amar, is on viscoelasticity of cement pastes. And again, the purpose for that paper to go to write on technical levels as well. Then something that consumed a lot of energy, uh, something that all of a sudden came up is like, why don't we do another round robin test on concrete parameters? Because the last one was in 2003, before this one. Uh, so that was executed in May of 2018 at the Université Patois uh, in between in France and locally organized by Yannick Fanouf, Shafika Jalal, and Lonoli Bessar. And direct involvement of two industry partners uh, that we have is Ekion Biton, uh, the concrete producer in the Schleibinger Geräte, as a testing equipment producer with Marcus Graham and Helena Kelly. So we're really grateful towards the industry and there's been industry sponsorships uh, for that event as well. And not going to read the names, but these are all the people who have contributed uh, to that round robin test and the analysis of the data. Uh, so this is a big subsection of our uh, technical committee. We've got 70 people uh, and we have had many, many, many discussions uh, on the outcomes of that. So just to give an indication, this is the team and you know whoever is the dirtiest is the one that worked the most productive. Just to give an indication, right? So we compared five concrete mixtures, three water mixtures uh, over two intense days. Uh, we had a 20, hour, 20 hours total of testing. Uh, and we evaluated flow curves, which has been done in the past, so there's no, nothing new on that. Uh, but also structural buildup and then the thermology interface reometry. That's new. We haven't done that before. So that's not in the test done in, in 2000 and 2003. Uh, we had a combination, if we look at all devices, geometry, and 14 different tools available. Uh, to do measurements, which here they get an overview uh, of our tools that we've been using in that. Uh, so if you go more in details on the analysis, so these are the flow curves. So this is yield stress on, on the left-hand graph and discussed in the right-hand graph. Uh, we actually made a big effort, uh, because if you compare reameters, the question is what is the reference? And we made a big effort to try to stay as objective as possible. You can't just take a certain reameter, that doesn't work. I can't take just an average either for this procedure, and we had enough data to actually be have a very statistical, founded analysis procedure to calculate what we call based on the average. But it's not just an average. Uh, and then what you see is you see the differences between the average. So we get about a factor two difference between the lowest one and the highest one, which is in line with the previous experiments 15, 20 years ago as well. Um, so we see that that factor two, and then we'll focus on this cost. The, the correlation coefficients are absolutely amazing. So that's a good thing, you know. If, if the concrete has a high viscosity, we measure high viscosity. If concrete has a low viscosity, we measure low viscosity. That's good. And each reameter is able to distinguish between high and low despite these differences. Uh, but we still have that factor two in there, and we suspect that's due to calibration settings uh, and transformations of raw data into measured data uh, in the different devices. Uh, and then we did a little more detailed analysis, and I know it's a lot on one graph in here. Um, but we'll go in, in, in just the conclusion of it. So we'll look actually at the deviations from that curve and see is there one reameter that has more spread on the data compared to another one. The answer is no. So each of those devices, especially the six we really looked at because they were able to give us fundamental units, the spread on the data compared to the line is about the same. So let's say that the reliability of the measurement does not depend on the reameters we evaluate. However, it depends on mixing. So certain mixtures are more prone to be accurately measured with less variability than others. And that's where, that's where one of the very interesting conclusions comes in. And if you look at yield stress, uh, the main thing we figured out is that coarse aggregate content is a disturbing factor. Because more coarse aggregates we had in the system. So our concretes were more sense of more variability uh, compared to our motors. And then higher yield stress, lower viscosity was also a factor. For viscosity, well, the higher the viscosity, the more spread. So that's what we found from that. Uh, also, we had one of the tools uh, had a more extensive measurement procedure to measure longer, and we really saw a negative effect on the results in case of country. And uh, we attribute that to shear loose particle migration. Again, the reality can't really look inside the country, it doesn't work, right? Um, and we couldn't do any hard tests either because we want to refresh the sample and use the sample, uh, but that's what we suspect from that. So these are some really interesting conclusions from that Ramon test for the flow curves. Then the structural buildup analysis, and again, Sofian might be more uh, situated, more suitable to do that explanation. Uh, but that portion of our team evaluated the, uh, the static yield stress slope increase. So how much does the static yield stress increase as a function of time? Uh, they looked at a critical time parameter that is the time to double the static yield stress. So that will become independent of the initial value and, and factor reometric calibration. 
uh, and then a coupled effect that multiplies the initial yield stress with the slope. And all the measures show similar trends. So again, very similar conclusion, although they did not have that much data to do the fundamental statistical analysis, uh, because you just have one measurement per mixture with the flow curve, you had three measurements per mixture. Uh, so that's one of the things that they meant standard averages for that analysis. But there's a couple of points to pay attention to that we noticed, or that they noticed in the analysis itself, is one, the measurement procedure. So how many data points uh, we're getting. Uh, we had, uh, with the tests we did, within the time frame we wanted to do the measurements, uh, we did not have enough measurements to actually to save, so we recommend more measurement data points as a function of time. Uh, data acquisition of some devices led to a problem because we missed the peak in the measurement, and then the effect of some disturbances like vibration and bleeding uh, could really disturb measurements, so it's a, it's a sensitive measurement. So you just an overview of two long days of hard physical but very more rewarding labor. Uh, this is actually copied from the, the 2018 writing report, um, where we had old friends but also new motivated and talented young colleagues. So we had uh, a couple of students really hard involved with us, strongly involved. That was really fun uh, to work with those people, see the motivation. Uh, and then of course, you know, after all those, they get very hungry. Uh, but we need to have some networking uh, to really commonly invent science and implementation. I think that's one of the main goals of Ryan uh, to move forward. So where are we at with this? So we have submitted the application uh, to put this in a topical collection and has been approved. Uh, so we'll have four papers uh, on the Rabbit test. The first one is dealing with the devices, the mixtures, and the procedures. And everybody in the team, all 17, will be co-author on that one. Uh, and then paper two is the flow curve analysis, so the results I showed you, but you know, a little wider and a little broader explained. Uh, and those two submissions are really simple. Just look in the final administration portion of that uh, to submit this, and those two papers will be submitted simultaneously uh, into that. That paper three is ready. Uh, the reviews have been completed. Uh, it's just uh, the team, the authors are doing the final editions. We anticipate the submission uh, next month uh, on that one. That paper four, the team is still working into it. Uh, we're having the paper almost ready, but still needs to go through the review and so on. So that might be one of the last outcomes of our TC uh, coming in as the last paper in the top of the collection. Um, also on that, so as I said, we presented the results in a full two-hour technical session uh, during the ACI convention in Orlando last spring. And our intention, if there's a conference back on Reality or SEC that's right and sponsored or co-sponsored, uh, we want to do the same thing. We want to dedicate a certain activity, and we can expand that, but we want to do that uh, in conjunction with the organizers. But the, the, point, the point is that our community will be, hopefully, by then closed. Uh, but that's the purpose for us to spread the results, apart from the, the presentations in ACI and then the topical collection. We want to get that thing out. Uh, and then the, the workshops. So we had a, one international workshop in conjunction with the Robert test on real measurement of some of these uh, That happened, again, in, in IROS, uh, the University of Dampo. Uh, and that led to writing proceedings 132, and that was an open paper, um, open participation to everybody. And then we had a second one in November of the same year. We actually gave feedback on our first interpretation, of our first conclusions, temporary conclusions uh, of the Red Robin tests. Uh, was done at Paris, the French Institute of Public Works. Uh, and that was a focused workshop on topics on or associated with Red Robin tests, uh, including, just give an example, one presentation from Marcus Graham but actually describe the details on how a reameter works with all the technical, electrical, and electronic aspects in it. So that's really interesting. Uh, target towards the industry. Uh, really to show the industry what's going on. Then the future. Uh, so these are two TCs that have been largely or less largely inspired by the work of ours. Uh, so TCPCC has been founded last year. It's pumping off concrete, and here tonight are uh, the leaders on those. And actually we have our third meeting taking place today, this afternoon. Uh, a second one, although it's a little longer of a stretch, uh, to call it one of our inspirations, but there's data-driven concrete science. Uh, being inspired, I would say, by some of the rheology topics that Marcus Graham uh, presented to us, and then we referred to Sandra, who was actually taking the need on that, so there's some implication of our rheology committee uh, in that one. And then three ideas that have been suggested, we're still looking for people. Uh, active rheology control by HIT, uh, but that will probably take off next year. Uh, then there's big chemical amixtures, which is still missing, and that would be a huge one. Uh, proposed by Kamal, Kayat, and Wolfram Schmidt, but unfortunately these are two extremely busy people, uh, so they might need more volunteers to actually take the lead on that one. And 
then the other thing we want to do, because this committee does not have recommendations, because we got so sidetracked with Ron Robinson's giving very interesting results but taking so much time off our committee efforts. So we do not have recommendations, and we want to rectify that by making a separate technical committee, short term, to actually deliver the, real, the recommendations on how to measure rheological properties. Uh, so that's, I've been discussing with Yannick to see what we're going to do, uh, and maybe, hopefully, we'll have a submission of a proposal anytime soon uh, for that small, short term TC. Uh, so the perspective, uh, so the research and the application of reality is still growing, right? So we need to have further understanding of reality and so on, adapting the reality and having new uh, construction technologies. Uh, but we got to be careful we don't advance too much compared to the industry, right? Uh, but performing reality is not easy, right? It's not, you know, simple click of the button and you get the best result. Uh, well, you will have a result. The question is how good is the result, right? So there's a lot of things that are happening, and then doing the measurements affects the result. So how you do the measurement really affects the result of that. So that's also something we want to focus on in the recommendations, right? And then with the knowledge that's been collected by the TC, uh, we need to develop and we call the sexual recommendations because they're not going to be standardized testing procedure. We can't do that. It's not possible. Uh, but how to measure rheological properties and then providing educational tools towards people, young researchers starting in the field, but also the industry, uh, on how to implement and how to do rheology and measure the rheology property so they can advance into the other topics uh, that are based on built on reality. So with this, that's the overview of the achievements of our Rhino TC266. And 